So Windows privilege escalation. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Recently, if you've seen, we made the Linux privilege escalation guide, and I'll link that one in the end cards at the end of this video if you want to go back and watch that. Now, this time, you know, upon very popular demand, we are doing the same thing, but for Windows privilege escalation. This is definitely a pretty loaded topic, as just as any privilege escalation can be, right? But it is a lot different than Linux in terms of how you go about it. There are some commonalities, obviously. The end goal that we're trying to do is pretty much the same, but a lot of the tool, a lot of the tools and techniques that you'll use are completely different. So I really wanted to give this its due attention. Now I'm going to pretty much cut straight to the screens to show you some techniques you can use. But before I do that, I just want to let you guys know if you're watching this. Um, the day it comes out, which is Thursday, I want you to know that my course is still open for enrollment, The Art of Breaking Code. I won't bore you too much with the details here. Check the link in the description, but just know that time is running out because the signups will close tomorrow on Friday at midnight. So just keep that in mind. Check out my FAQ video that I did yesterday. If you haven't seen that already, I'll link that one in the end screen as well. And yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the video. My methodology for Windows privilege escalation is actually pretty simple, a lot more simple than the Linux equivalent that you guys saw earlier. Now, one thing that I should clarify here is this methodology specifically applies to local Windows privilege escalation. So if I was dealing with an Active Directory domain, I would, I would handle it differently. There would be a different methodology for that. And I can show you guys... Uh, a little bit of that in the future. I mean, basically, I covered a lot of it in some of the Active Directory videos that I've done. There's basically just certain things that um, pertain specifically to Active Directory that you would look for. But this is definitely going to be a useful scenario here because sometimes you're, even in an Active Directory situation, sometimes your, your vector that you're looking for that's going to help you to move forward is a local privesque vulnerability. So the very first thing I'm going to check for, you may be familiar from the Linux side with the who am I command. Well, there's a little extra we're going to tack on to that. I would run a who am I slash priv. Okay. And what this is going to give us is the privileges information. Now this part is specific to windows. There's certain privileges that an account can have and certain ones basically give you elevated privileges that can result in you being able to elevate to administrator. So essentially administrator is what we're after here. And in Linux, we're trying to become root. In Windows, we're trying to become administrator or system, essentially. So that is the goal here. Now, with this particular machine, none of these will result in privilege escalation. I just know off the top of my head, what would be very lucrative if we is if we saw SE impersonate privilege, because then we could do so what's called token impersonation in order to elevate our privileges. So let me just pull that up for you guys. So you can see what I'm talking about. So if I search token impersonation, it's a very common thing. So if we had SE impersonate or even assign primary token, right? Any of these, right? Even backup and backup privilege, we would be able to uh, to exploit that for privilege escalations. So here are the lucrative ones that you're looking for. So if you have like a token impersonation, then you could use a juicy potato or depending on the exact version of Windows you're dealing with, you might need to use rotten potato or rogue potato. Um, print spoofer, different stuff like that. There's basically, they basically all serve the same purpose. They exploit the same vulnerability, but in different ways, because this was a vulnerability that's constantly being patched by Microsoft, but the attackers are always finding new ways to exploit this. So as you see here, um, you know, this article can go more in depth with it, but that is the first thing I would check for. And I think for good measure, it's also useful to run who am I slash all because that will give you some additional information. Like for example, the groups that you're a part of. And from that, you can figure out if um, you're part of any, any groups that might be useful in privilege escalation. 
uh, especially this uh, this here, like uh, what your level is. Medium is the default, so nothing too interesting there. If we were, you know, high uh, high level, then we might be able to leverage that for privilege escalation. So different things like that to be looking for if we're part of any special groups, like maybe a backup group or something like that could be lucrative or any non-standard group, basically. So as always with privilege escalation, it comes down to knowing the base case, being very familiar with the default configurations of things. That way, when you see non-standard stuff, it will uh, you'll be able to notice it, basically. So after I've run that, the next thing that I'm going to look for is, if you remember back to the Linux video, how I look for hidden files and folders in certain directories, that's basically what I'm going to look at next on Windows. So currently we are in the documents folder for our user account. So I would just go back one for starters here and uh, list the contents. Now, what I would do is I would do a GCI recurse and this is going to be a really nice shorthand for us. It's essentially going to look in all of these different folders here. Um, not the hidden stuff, mind you, but everything here is going to just automate printing all the contents of everything in here. That saves us time. We don't have to individually go into each of these folders and do a, a GCI or a dir or anything like that. So I do GCI, tack recurse, and then dot saying from the current directory, recursively look through all these subdirectories for files and folders. So I press enter on that and it's gonna take a second to run perhaps, but yeah, you see here it lists everything out. Basically there's not much going on with this account. There's only one file in all of these folders and that's the user flag from uh, desktop. So not too much there. What you can do is a GCI tag hidden. Uh, if you run this with recurse, just realize there's going to be a ton of stuff that comes back. So you might want to be a little bit careful. You probably don't want to run this from where I'm about to run it from, as you'll see why here in a second. There's just like a ton of stuff. Um, even some permission denied and stuff like that. But that's something you can do. Um, another thing is that, let's see here. Uh, we, we could just start looking for hidden folders. Now, because I have a WinRM shell, I am in PowerShell. This is something to note. If you were in, uh, you know, like a regular CMD shell, you might want to run like a dir my, uh, or slash a, right? And that will display all the hidden stuff as well. So, I mean, I could just do a tack hidden here without the recurse. And yeah, now I see the hidden folders like app data and stuff like that. Usually there's a ton of stuff in app data. And that's why if you run this with recurse, it's just a ton of information that's dumped to the screen. So basically using the same concept, there's some other areas that I would want to check. Um, one of them being the root directory, right? Just like, you know, the root of the C drive, just like we checked the root directory in Linux. So the root of the file system rather. So we see these files here. <clears throat> we can just do, I would recommend just doing a GCI here without recurse because obviously there's going to be tons of files and folders here. But what I'm looking for is, is there any custom folder here? Because if the box creator put something there, or maybe there's a third party application installed on the system that might be vulnerable, this is one location that it could be, the root of the C drive. In this case, everything is standard. There's no uh, nothing that stands out here. The other area I'd look for is the world writable, a world writable directory like temp. So if I navigate to, well, I don't even have to navigate to it. If I just do a GCI on C Windows, oops, C Windows temp. And uh, yeah, that is interesting. Usually you have access to Windows temp. In this case, looks like that's uh, locked down for whatever reason. So at this point, what I would do is I would run some kind of script. Now, a lot of people prefer WinPs, right? The Ps scripts. We talked about LinPs, which is the Linux version. Personally, I want to show you guys an alternative that I actually prefer above that. And it is a script called privs check by itman. And let me just 
search that one up so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So privask check it man. And it's called privescheck.ps1. It's this script right here. I'll zoom in a bit for you guys. This is the one that I prefer just because I love the output. I find that there's much less false positives with this one. It's a lot easier to go through the output, in my opinion. So maybe if you haven't tried this one before, maybe this is something that you want to give a go and see how it works for you, basically. Now, the prerequisite for this is you have to be able to run PowerShell on the system. And if you're dealing with a super old system and if either it doesn't have PowerShell or it has like a super old version of PowerShell, you might not be able to run this. But in any other scenario, you can run this and I would recommend it. So if you do want to run WinPs, that's totally fine as well. I would recommend starting with something that won't give you as much output. So it's just easier to go through it, more efficient to go through it. I know when I went through some of the Privesk rooms on TriHackMe and the stuff created by Tiberius, this is the command that he recommends running. So you can do WinPs any exe with fast, search fast and CMD. And that way you're getting certain targeted information and so on and so forth. You can pick out you could pick out specific things rather than just doing all checks and then getting a ton of information back. Because the, the issue that I found with WinPs is that it, there's a ton of false positives and that can take you a lot of extra time to look through and you might end up missing that needle in a haystack in terms of finding the vulnerability if you have so many false positives. So let me just demo for you guys running this privescheck.ps1 just to show you guys, get help you guys get a feel for what it's like. So in order to run this, we're going to need to dot source it um, as it's called. So basically like that, you're kind of like importing it, if you will. And then immediately after that, we need to invoke it. So I'll just do it all in one line here. So invoke privescheck is what it's called. That's the name of the function. And we're going to tell it to run in extended mode just to be really thorough. So we'll do that and let it run. And the nice thing that you'll see here is that it'll tell you like, hey, nothing found or, you know, found something interesting. It'll let you know. And it, it really, even though it's not color coded like WinPs is, one thing that I really like about this is that it'll it'll let you know if it, if it found something of interest. And there's a lot less false positives f through this in my experience at least. So it's easy to pre it's pretty easy to skim through and uh, and everything like that. So we can just go through here and see if we can identify anything. It even tells us like, hey, false, all these are not exploitable. Whereas WinPs just gives you, you know, the permissions and you just kind of have to know. So this one I think is probably easier for beginners to use uh, as well. So I'm just going to kind of skim through this. But as you see, it's looking for, you know, unquoted service paths and all kinds of stuff like that, which that's something to definitely look for and pay attention to is unquoted service paths, you know, the registry, anything you can read from the registry or log on passwords. If you can get any um, cash credentials, things like that, there's basically... A ton of different stuff that you can look for. And it's going to automatically look for those things for us, which is really nice. So, looks like it's it's still running. But yeah, that gives you a pretty good idea of just how this works. You can go through it. I'm not going to go through all of it step by step here, but you, you see generally how it works. It'll tell you if it finds any results, anything interesting. So, it's really easy to prioritize what to look through, in my opinion at least. This is just one available tool you can use or not use if you want, depending on your preferences. So if we were to really be going through and looking closely at that, one thing we would have noticed is there is a uh, special folder in the C drive. Now, one step that I skipped that I should have done as part of my methodology is to look for hidden, right? So GCI hidden, uh, which if we would have done this, we would have saw that there is actually this PS transcripts here, which is pretty interesting. So if we go into, into that, we can see what kind of data is there. And we'll just do it with hidden again. 
And we see there is a, another directory. So let's just keep following that. So nothing there. What about hidden? So yeah, there is a hidden text file here. Now typically, let's see if this will work. Normally with Evil WinRM, you can just say download and download the file that way. Okay, it looks like the download was successful. Let's exit out. Essentially, let me just show you my write-up just in effort to, uh, to save us some time here. So yeah, okay, here is what the output of the actual text file looks like. You see there is um, some commands that are being ran here. But most importantly, the command they ran here, this net use command, has the username and password to the Ryan account. So then we can basically just test these out with CrackMap exec, and we realize uh, they are valid. And um, I believe that, uh, yeah, we could just win RM into Ryan's account, and there's a note there. And basically, you just follow it follow that through on the privesk. You can run, you know, now that we have credentials to a new account, the Ryan account, we can go ahead and run that privesk check again, right? And that's always useful to do with the script or basically the methodology that I showed you. You get access to a new account, just go through that full methodology again. And basically this time you'll see either through the script or your own manual commands that your account is a member of the contractors group. So you can basically leverage that um, I think in this case, this is a uh, Active Directory machine. So there's some Active Directory stuff there that I won't really bore you guys with. But that's the general idea, the general methodology, just looking through stuff like that and then running um, a script. Basically, I would run either that privest check script or WinPiece. Seatbelt is another one that a lot of people like. But yeah, let me know if uh, if you have any questions about that down in the comment section below. I like to keep things pretty simple with Windows Privesk. Um, generally, I find that that will help me find it in, in most case scenarios. So if you have any additional things to add, maybe something that I, I didn't cover in this video, also let us know down in the comment section and I will see you guys right in the next video. Thanks for watching.